So that brings us to a discussion of variable costs. Uh, so, so when we're thinking about variable costs, we're thinking about how do total production costs change as the amount of uh, uh, with the amount of electricity that we generate. So, what are some of the things that change as we increase the amount of electricity we generate? Well, we've already talked about increasing maintenance of the generating equipment, but the big variable cost for operating a power plant uh, for most power plants is the fuel cost. Uh, fuel is just the lion's share of the variable cost. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the monthly variable cost as the monthly fuel bill. Now remember, we have some of those operation and maintenance costs that are part of that, but they're small. They're really small compared to the monthly fuel bill. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, ignore that little part of operation and maintenance costs and include it in our monthly fuel bill. So uh, our monthly variable cost of operating the power plant is going to be our monthly fuel bill. And so we're going to need to think about how we calculate that monthly fuel bill. Uh, so what does the monthly fuel bill depend upon? Well, it depends on how much you run the plant. Uh, it depends on the capacity factor of the power plant. Um, and it also depends on how much fuel is needed to generate each megawatt hour of output from the power plant. Now, that fuel requirement for each megawatt hour, we have a term for that. We call it the heat rate. The heat rate for a power plant is the amount of fuel it takes, and we're going to talk about the amount of fuel in terms of a million BTU, the heat content of the fuel, divided by the number of megawatt hours you can generate with that fuel. So the heat rate essentially is how much fuel does it take to generate a megawatt hour, and the more efficient a power plant is, the lower its heat rate is going to be. Uh, and in fact, the same power plant may have different heat rates at different capacity factors. So the heat rate may fall at really, uh, may be very high at really low capacity factors, but then the heat rate falls into a more efficient range as we get into the normal operating range of the power plant. And then it might be that if you push the power plant really hard up to its uh, extreme design capacity, the heat rate might start to rise again. We're going to make a nice simple assumption about the heat rate for our discussions. Um, but each plant will have its own characteristic heat rate at different capacity factors. So what do we have so far? The monthly fuel bill depends on uh, how much we run the plant, uh, how much fuel it takes to generate a megawatt hour of output and the price of fuel. Uh, so we're going to take those three things and use that to calculate our monthly fuel bill. So the monthly fuel cost is just the fuel price times the heat rate times the monthly output in terms of megawatt hours. Now again, I've already mentioned the heat rate is going to vary not just with how much we run the plant, but it's going to vary a lot with the type of plant. Um, so uh, different, different kinds of plants are going to have very different heat rates. For example, uh, a base load coal-fired or natural gas-fired power plant is going to have a much lower heat rate than, say, a gas turbine peaking unit. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about these differences uh, as we move into the next unit. Um, for today, we're going to make a special assumption about the heat rate in power plants to make everything nice and simple. We're going to assume that the heat rate is constant for a given power plant. So what we're going to assume is for a given power plant, it has the same efficiency no matter how much we're running it. Now, we know that's not true for power plants. We know that they tend to have a heat rate that varies some. But the way to think about this is, if you build a power plant, you have an expected range where you think you're going to be running this power plant. 
And so we're going to talk about a power plant as if that's where we're going to be running it most of the time, because you wouldn't build it if you were going to be using it at these other much higher heat rates. You would have built a different kind of power plant. So we're going to make a simplifying assumption that the heat rate is constant for a given power plant. Again, we know this isn't precisely true, but for all practical purposes, it is um, a convenient assumption that we can make without uh, harming um, the way we think about costs. So what we're going to do, uh, f remember, from now on, we're going to assume that the heat rate is constant for a given power plant. It will be very different for different kinds of power plants, but it will be the same no matter how much we run a power plant. And I'll point out some places where this could make a difference for us if we relax that assumption. All right. So back to our 500 megawatt power plant. Um, it has a fixed cost, a fixed monthly payment to finance the plant, and remember that also includes the fixed component of operation and maintenance costs. That's $2,129,000. So we've got our fixed component, writing that check every month. Now we have our variable costs, and how do we calculate that? Well, we have a, I'm going to assume a fuel price of, of $2.50 per million BTU. Uh, a heat rate of 9 million BTU per megawatt hour and a fuel cost per, so that gives us a fuel cost per megawatt hour of uh, $2.50 times 9 million BTU per megawatt hour which is $22.50 per megawatt hour in fuel costs. All right, very simple, straightforward calculation, just what are we paying for the fuel and how much electricity does each unit of fuel cost us <clears throat> in terms of its energy content. And that would be a little different for coal, a little different for natural gas, uh, and of course quite different for uh, other generation technologies, especially ones that don't require a fuel input. They're going to end up having zero fuel cost, and that's going to be a really important consideration for us, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Okay, so here's a picture of our monthly fuel cost, our monthly variable cost, and remember we're thinking about fuel as our main variable cost. So our total monthly variable cost with a constant heat rate is just a nice um, uh, straight line increasing. Every time we increase the capacity factor by 1%, we're increasing output by a certain number of megawatt hours depending on the capacity of the power plant. And each increment in megawatt hours um, is going to have a certain uh, heat rate and fuel cost associated with it. We use that to calculate the variable cost. They're going to go up in a nice even increment each percent of capacity we add to the power plant. So uh, our variable cost is going to be uh, a very simple straight line under our assumptions of a constant heat rate. Now remember with a non-constant heat rate our variable costs uh, would be very different. They would go up uh, quickly at first and then they'd go up more slowly then they'd go up quickly again as our heat rate changed over the um, uh, really from going from really low to medium to high capacity factors. 